Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweet, and I try in this tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how you can easily do skin retouching in about 10 minutes. So, this is going to be an in depth tutorial, but it's going to be about 10 minutes. And if I don't have time to watch those lengthy tutorials, this is going to be a very nice and helpful tutorial for you. So, right now, we are going to be using a concept known as frequency separation. Frequency separation basically is a skin retouching technique that divides the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. So without further ado, let's get started. And if I thought the video is helpful, make it a point that you hit the like button on this video on the video so that YouTube can push and recommend this video to many people out there. So you're just going to come to the background and press Ctrl J twice to create those layers. And you're going to name this into low and you're going to name this into high. So usually the low frequency layer contains the colors and the high frequency layer contains it contains the texture so come to low frequency layer deactivate or hide the high frequency layer then come to filter and come to blur right here and come to gaussian blur so right now we have to blur out the textures from the skin area so make sure you zoom into the skin right there and you look at the textures within the skin so you're just going to start taking the radius up up to when you're just starting to lose out on the details in the skin area so radius of about six is okay for such an image so you have to blur out the details and simply come and press ok so your radius may be your radius rather may be different from the one that i'm going to be using for this very image so make sure that you use a radius that suits your image like i said we come to filter blur and come to gaussian blur so we just we simply blur out the textures from the image so i'm just going to be using a radius of six because this works best for me for this kind of image and i'm just going to simply click on ok so you have to blur out and stop at the point when your image is losing out on the textures or the details within it in the skin area so just come the high frequency and now activate it then come to image and come down to apply image so when you come to apply image you're going to get this window open for you so make sure the layer from which you are subtracting the textures is the low frequency layer. Remember, we only want to remain with the textures in the high frequency layer. So if at all you are working with an 8-bit image, make sure you use the blend mode of subtract. Or pass at 100%, preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is 2 and offset 128 and invert is not checked. And you'll see the textures on this gray kind of layer. But if at all you are using a 16-bit image, make sure you select the low frequency layer. The blend mode has to be add or pass at 100 preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale is two and off offset zero and make sure you turn on the invert option and to be like this just come and simply click ok so after doing this just come to the blend mode and change it from normal and change it all the way to linear light and you'll get back the image the way it was meant to be initially before so i just can put this in a group by selecting both layers and pressing ctrl or command g on the keyboard and you're going to click and open up the group by clicking on the drop down icon so just come to the low frequency layer and select it so you're just going to come under the brushes if at all using a new version of photoshop right click under the brushes and you get the mr brush tool but mine is down here and if at all you have older versions of photoshop you may find your mr brush tool down here so just get it and right now you have to set it the best way so just come and make sure the hardness is zero percent and make sure this option clean brush is selected the second option is selected right here which says clean the brush after each and every stroke the what you're going to be using is nine percent the load of 75 the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent then also make sure sample orders is not checked because we want to only mix the transitions within the skin area in the low frequency layer make sure sample orders is not checked and right now in order to see the uneven skin tone transitions make sure you slightly zoom in by using ctrl command plus and hide the texture or high frequency layer so just going to start evening out the transitions within the skin using the mr brush tool and how this works you mix colors that look alike so that they can really look better and transition better regarding the skin tone area so just going to come and blend those transitions to look a little bit good or even better so I'm just going to blend those colors so this is how to use the mr brush tool and how to use it if at all your mr brush tool is showing a plus icon 
press the caps lock key and to increase or decrease on the size of the Mr. Bash tool, you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard. So just come and even out the skin tone area just like that. And for full body images, really, you don't have to do so, so, so much like the close ups or those headshots. So we are just going to also come on the neck area and also work on the neck area and blend even uh, the hands right here. So basically, this is how you can use the Mr. Bash tool to blend or even out the transitions within the skin area. And with just do you using the Mr. Bash tool, let me show you what we have just achieved by just using the Mr. Bash tool. So turn on the texture layer and you can see the before and the after for just using the Mr. Bash tool to even now the transitions within the skin. So when you're done using this, you can simply stop right here for full body images and you go straight to remove blemishes. So select the high frequency layer and get your clone stamp tool. For the settings, I prefer to use a hardness of zero, opacity and the flow of 100% and the mode is normal. Then sample is on the current layer because we want to work on information within the high frequency layer. And right now you can zoom into the image right there and you start cleaning up this. So how the clone stamp tool works, you hold on the alternate key on the keyboard and left click on a clean area and simply release the alternate and left click over the blemish that you want to clean up in the skin area. So that is how the clone stamp tool works. So if at all you're using Mac, make sure you hold down option and left click to sample clean skin and left click to paste it over the blemish. So make sure that your clone stamp tool is always bigger than the blemish that you want to eliminate so that you can easily replace it with clean skin that you copy from a nearby area. So that is how our clone stamp tool works when you're trying to clean up or remove blemishes from the skin area. So we are going to do this very, very fast and quick because I don't want this to be a pretty long tutorial because most of you tend to retain and you stop watching midway. So we are now done retouching the skin and removing blemishes. So this is the before, after, before and after. So right now what we want to do, you're just going to be doing some little bit more of the color grading on the image. So just going to come to the hue and saturation adjustment layer and they're going to come to our reds right here. So in come to the reds, come and simply take the lightness down for the reds a little bit. Then you're going to come and add some contrast within the image because I feel like it's lacking more on the contrast. So 12 is fine for such an image. Then come to selective color and simply select the black channel. Or So come to selective color and select blacks and simply intensify the blacks to make the image pop a little bit more and also darken the blacks. So we are also going to take down uh, the yellows just like that and this is going to make the image better so if at all you want to make the whites look even more white or whiter you can come to the whites right here and simply eliminate the yellows within the white area and that is going to make the white area a little bit whiter and right now we just want to you can see i'm just going to group this and i'm going to group uh, the color grading by pressing command and selecting all of them and pressing ctrl g to so this was for our frequency separation and this is for our color color grid so i'm just going to show you before and after for the color grading so you just want to do a little bit of eye and teeth whitening so just come to the hue and saturation adjustment layer and simply take the saturation of the master make sure master is selected and desaturate all the way up to around negative 85 and make sure the white layer mask is selected and press ctrl or command i on the keyboard to invert that effect and simply come to the brushes and get a soft round brush make sure the hardness at zero or pass in the flat 100 percent then make sure in these color swatches you have black and red by clicking on these two small boxes and make sure white is on top or you can use x on the keyboard to switch between black and white so make sure it is white on top and white is going to be revealing the whitening that was hidden behind the black mask so 
Zoom in by using Ctrl Command Plus on the keyboard and look for the eyes and teeth and you can now paint on them using our white brush to reveal the eye and teeth whitening effect onto both the eyes and teeth in this very image and if at all you're interested in how i color graded or process this raw file i have a color grading tutorial how you can do it in photoshop so you are now done whitening the eyes so next thing that you want to do let me show you a quick before and after before after before after so right now we just want to export the image so that it is sharp and doesn't change in color after posting it so just simply come to file and come to export and come to export as so it is going to open up the export as window and with this window we can simply feed in the settings that we want remember sometimes we export images and they change in color after posting them or sharing them on social media so make sure your format is jpeg quality at 100 percent make sure your sample is by cubic sharper right here because we want photoshop to slightly sharpen the photo for us and make sure you embed these options in the color space so Make sure you tick convert to srgb and also embed color profile and when you're done doing all this after the image is done loading the preview simply click on export and you can look for where you want to save the image on your computer and this is all for today's tutorial and if at all you have learned some something new from the tutorial make sure you hit the like button on this video so that youtube can push and recommend this video to many people out there Ronix from Mons Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in yet more amazing shows. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.